Welcome to another episode of Silence is Golden. I am Simon Kelly. This guy. <coughs> I'm Troy Dean. And today we'll be talking about achieving your financial fantasy. I also hit the streets of Paran and asked some questions about freelancing to the public. Let's see what they think. Uh, stay with us. <laughs> How you doing, man? I'm exhausted. Yeah? That's why I'm wearing Do you have the... bloodshot eyes? Is that what's uh, happening? Probably. Uh, let me, I just need to open my phone with my face. Hang on a second. Yeah. See, it doesn't even recognize my face. I'm that exhausted. Yeah, well. Have a child. Yep. Have a Did child. Did you just tell me to have a child? Have a child. Was that related to what you're talking about? Yeah. It's related this to why you're tired? Why I'm tired, because um, I uh, have a little boy who woke up at 2.30 in the morning and Gradually went back to sleep and then woke up again at 3.30 and gradually went back to sleep. So I've basically been awake all night. Chinaman's dentist appointment. My granddad's favourite joke, that one. 2.30. Yes. So good. Dentist appointment. 2.30. Yeah, nice one, George. Mm. All right, well, let's see if those eyeballs can keep up with what's up next because we're going to see if we can figure out what is happening here. Hmm. What's happening here? This is the segment where uh, the boys pull up a random image on the telly and we try and guess what it is. Well, actually, he knows. It's just, the, this whole segment's just set up to make me look stupid, really, isn't it? Mm. Hmm? Which wouldn't be hard. The show or I the mean, you've, segment? You've, got, you've gone to a lot of trouble to make me look stupid. I don't actually yeah. think you need to work this hard to make me look stupid. <laughs> Total GMV has exceeded 168.2 billion Surpassing total GMV of 2017, 15 hours, 49 minutes and 39 Got seconds. A countdown timer. Looks like something <coughs> from Twitter there. Did GMV. You see the Twitter thing? I don't know if that's related. No. Could it be? I didn't see anything from Twitter there. Hmm. So there's a countdown, it yeah. seems like. Countdown Got time. Got that part. Total GMV has exceeded 168.2 billion. Yeah. Total. The GMV would throw me because I have no idea what that is. Well, GDP <laughs> is gross domestic produce. Mm hmm. Uh, there are other letters. GDH is gross domestic happiness. Gotcha. GMV is is that a party drug? Oh no, that's GHV. Great isn't motor it? vehicles. Oh yeah. Um, total general motor vehicles has exceeded RMB. Is that what is that currency? I should know this. Is that is it yen? No. Is it the symbol is RMB? Yeah, yeah, maybe it is. The symbol is right. The symbol I don't is know yen. One hundred sixty-eight point two billion yen. Yep. So we're we're in yen. That's a that's warmer. Definitely warmer. So where, where is... Japan. Uh, another one? What Korea. about What's another one? No, another one. <laughs> a bigger one. China. Mm. Yen. All right. So what, why Hang would on, something isn't, happen? Isn't yen the Japanese currency? No. Isn't it? What's Japanese currency? Don't know. It's a Chinese it could currency be yen. yen. I thought so. Yeah. Whew. Um, total GMV. I'm clueless. So there's a countdown. 15 hours left and there's 168 billion currencies. <laughs> Have you seen this one? No. What, what happened on the weekend? Other than, you know, well, lest I, we well, forget. What happened on the weekend is I set up a bunch of camping gear in the, in the front yard because right. we we're preparing to go camping with Oscar. Getting colder. I don't getting think colder. this has got much to do with that. <laughs> no, not so much. Oh, you mean what happened outside of my front yard <laughs> yeah. on the weekend? Does it matter? No idea. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No idea. Is this, is this a cryptocurrency thing? Uh, no. no. Um, on the 11th of the 11th every year, there is oh. an event oh. run by an extremely large company. Oh called Alibaba. Oh. Have you heard of this? Singles no. Day? No. So last year, Singles they did. Day? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why would I know it about Singles Day? It is the biggest. I'm married with a child. I don't even know if it's related to that. Oh, right. It's just the single, it is the biggest online shopping day oh. in the world. Oh, Black Friday? T no, no. Oh. Twice as big as Black Friday oh. and Cyber Monday put, put together. together. Yeah. Right. So the, last year, they did 26 billion or something like that. This year, the 11th of the 11th, they did 30.8 billion in one day. US dollars? Mm -hmm. Right. So what is that 168.2 billion yen or something? Yeah. Is it? Can't you do the currency in your head? No. And what's GMB? I don't know. GMV. No idea. Gross volume. I'm assuming there's a volume wow, okay. somewhere. Wow. That is just what's insane. RMB? Uh, no idea either. Don't know. Okay. No, no. There we go. Yeah, yeah. The world's largest online shopping day. Uh, it's like yeah, Black Friday and Cyber Monday in the US. Uh, it, but unfortunately, it was the least amount of growth year on year. Least amount of growth. So they're growth a bit disappointed with $30.8 billion. Wow. Reminds me of a quote from uh, Clive James, uh, not Clive James, Clive Hamilton. There you go, that's how tired I am. Clive Hamilton wrote a fabulous book. Uh, he actually, he wrote the quarterly essay, yeah. but he also wrote a book, which was quite depressing and quite bleak. <laughs> 
And one of his quotes is, the problem with capitalism, and, yeah. and particularly he was talking about the Australian economy, the problem is that too many people are spending money they don't have mm. to buy shit they don't need to impress people they don't like. <laughs> yep. There we go. All right, what else is happening? <clears throat> Ooh, that looks like an iPad that folds in half. That's pretty good. That's close. Not an iPad, something else. An iPhone that folds in half. No, no, the other one. The other company. Oh, a Samsung Galaxy Woo. tablet. Yeah. Well, iPad is just the, you know, catch-all word for tablet. Oh, right. It's going to be the new band-aid of That's smart right. things. That's right. The iPad. That's yeah, right. Yeah. Like the Hoover. Is yeah, the, yeah. It's know, a brand, but it's synonymous. a thing. That's right. Yeah. Google. So Search engine. It's Infinity, Infinity Flex display, and the phone itself has a tablet-sized screen that could be folded in half. Right. That's yeah. stupid. <laughs> I'm not allowed to swear, am I? That's fucking stupid. I, yeah. what, who, you like, did get whipped like Seriously, that people have got too much spare insane, time in there. Who it? needs an iPad that folds in half, for Christ's sake? That is too much, too much spare time yeah. and too much budget in the R&D department. That is bored monkey playing with too much money. What else can I do with all this cash? That is stupid. Who yeah. wants an iPad that folds? My nan used to always say, like, when will pocket? it end? What, do you sit down and just break both screens at once? I don't, I don't, well, how would the screen even break? How would that work? That's just dumb. Yeah, that's I would insane. Not, I would not buy that. Not keen? Not keen. Are you looking forward to the, yeah, uh, the foldable Galaxy Infinity display? Would you buy it? Is it a Samsung? Screen that folds it? in half? Yeah, yeah. Right, no. Mm. No, I would not. Not keen. I would not buy that at all. In fact, I'm giving that a big... <laughs> a big one or a small sound? one? Do we have sound then or not? Oh, there we go. Connectivity <laughs> issues. There we go. Cool. All right, what do we got next? Very good. <clears throat> that is a scooter. Mm -hmm. And it's in San Francisco. That is the Golden Gate Bridge. Yep. And there's something on that scooter. Can you make it big again? Oh. Real quick. Uh, there's something on that scooter, is yeah, there? Yeah, there's a, the... there's a kickstand. Yep, but there's a there's some a kind of brand on the... Oh, Ford. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Ford are making scooters. Uh, so they've worked of. out that they can't manufacture cars efficiently. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no so Ford they've, fan. they've now... Well, I'm just talking any Western country, really. You shouldn't be trying to make cars, except maybe Elon Musk, but even he's struggling to keep up with demand. Mm. But at least he's proven that he can do it. Um, Ford are now making scooters. Well, they bought a scooter company. They bought a scooter company. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ford Motors. Is so, it a motorized scooter? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They it's bought a, a company scooter. called Spin, um, Dockless Electric Scooter Company, Spin. Right. They joined Lyft, which is into the e-scooter game, along with Bird and Lime. Yeah. Um, you remember when we were in San, Di San Diego? San Diego, yeah. Yeah, and they had the birds and the limes, and they basically just dumped them into San Diego and San Francisco. Yeah. You know that? Without, like, permits. So, like, that's yeah. how they started their business. Yeah, yeah. And just assumed people would ride them. A bit like Uber. Just dumped just dump cars into the world. Cars into the humans. world with drivers who yeah. hopefully have a you know certificate to work safely with the public what was it like and 1980 don't, don't talk to strangers 1990 don't get in cars yeah 2018 get, get in get cars, in cars with, strangers. with strangers and sleep on strangers couches yeah, yeah. beautiful yeah. <laughs> wow so the ford, new world so, that we're living so in ford motorized scooters so mm. what i'm looking forward to is the 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 uber driverless scooter <laughs> where i can basically order a driverless scooter to come pick you up to come pick me up and I just hop on it and stand mm. on it mm. and I can be on the phone and checking my emails at the same time while the scooter's just navigating my way through the streets of it's South got a little Asia. esky in the back couple of beers perfect yeah, yeah. that would be Wi -Fi fantastic on board. yeah yeah I'm super keen for driverless cars to just pick you up on demand and then go wherever so I have to make these awkward conversations yeah yeah I, definitely, I know I, I was know. talking to one of the guys who Max is like, Gary. Yeah, I hate talking to people yeah I know <laughs> Gary who was in the who works in the office here he, he was like I've got to go out to the suburbs and have a meeting with a client I've got to get an uber which means I've got to sit in a stranger's car and not talk for 45 minutes mm. I talk to uber drivers yeah same yeah all yeah. the time I actually really enjoy it I talk yeah. at them really yeah, actually. yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So how are you, mate? Having a good day? Let me tell you about my day. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's enough about no, you. Just, uh, that's enough about you. Let's talk about... That's enough about Do me. Do they ever Let's kick you out you. early? What do you think of me? <laughs> no, I never. I've never been kicked out of... You know the thing that oh, happened recently... Oh, we're here! Recently, <laughs> you know the thing that happened recently with Uber, though, is they brought in this rating system where... Yeah, yeah. And basically, if you fall below four stars, you get kicked off the platform mm -hmm. as a driver or a, or mm. a passenger. Mm -hmm. So now there's this really weird dynamic. Whenever you dial an Uber, they turn up. Everyone is super polite, mm -hmm. right? G'day mate, how are you? You're having a good day? Actually, I don't give a shit. Yeah. Just drive the frickin' car, 
down to band rehearsals with my shit in the back. Yeah. Let me out. We're not going to be friends. Give me a so five out of five. Now, there's all this now, this false kind of, yeah. you know, have a good day. Yeah, you thanks, watch, Darren. Do you watch Black Mirror? No. There's an episode all about that. It's just about like actually reading people. You have an interaction and you're right. like, oh yeah. Yeah, and yeah. you're like, bing, yeah, give them yeah. a good rating, yeah, and yeah. then this chick like it's loses weird. all their ratings, and then their life it's turns what's, to hell. What's Black Mirror? Uh, it's just like alternate futures, and they just like go. There's a TV show. Yes, yeah, TV oh, show, Netflix. Yeah, I yeah. have a child. Yeah, yeah. I heard about that. Yeah. <laughs> Tonight on the boring show. <laughs> Tonight on the boring show. I don't watch much television, mate. I have a child. Yeah, yeah. Well, you can sit back and check out this next one because I <sighs> am. I hit the streets yesterday. With oh, Max, excellent. I actually got pushed out onto the street with Fantastic. Max, and uh, and we got to um, we got to talk to the fine people of Paran, <laughs> uh, while Max was kicking me in the back and pushing me along. Ben came along as well. I'm not sure if we have any any footage of that, but we're going to see what I was talking to the fine people of Melbourne about. Word on the street. I am somewhat invasive, Simon. I'll be talking to people on the streets. We're going to be asking people about getting paid for freelance work. See what the people think, the fine people of Chapel Street Paran. Could I ask you a couple of questions about freelancing? Uh, no. Two minutes, I can do 30 seconds. Okay, go team. No? Yeah, all right. Do you have two minutes? I'll ask you a question. All right, no worries. Dude. When it comes to freelancing, um, would you be happy to pay someone for work before they do the work? If I had some sort of example of what they were doing and could be reassured that they're actually good at what they're doing, then yes. No. No. Why not? Uh, because there's no guarantee of quality. Without the history and the knowledge and the reputation of the freelancer, I wouldn't be parting any money before I got the product. I'd probably like to get the product first, then pay up front. Because you don't know what you're going to get when it's done. And then you don't want to kind of get into questions of, well, this isn't what I wanted or this isn't how... I suppose maybe... You'd want to ask questions first and find out um, how they go about their work and what ideas you have and how they can realise it before you want to make a financial transaction. When do you think it's okay to pay up front? Um, if you've got an established relationship, I would say. Uh, or a partial payment up front. A partial payment? No. What would make it okay to provide any kind of payment up front? A proven track record of what you want out of a brand if they have a great portfolio of uh, things that you like. What would stop you wanting to pay up front? Um, bad reviews <laughs> or I don't know, not having examples so you're not sure what their work would be. Yeah. Yeah. Would you hire someone like online without having like met them at all in another part of the world? Possibly, yeah. There's a lot of great designers all over the world so why not? <laughs> Good there work. Go. There's um, somewhat invasive Simon <laughs> Kelly. That's whoa, whoa, whoa. We fantastic. don't need to roll back to can those we get, names. Can we get a hashtag, somewhat invasive Simon <laughs> Kelly? That's fantastic. Um, good work, my friend. I tell you what, it it's takes kahunas oh to get out there and do that just kind of thing. It takes Max just whipping me in the back. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm, There's I'm just blood all over the back of my shirt. Super impressed. Uh, so, so what's the takeaway Exactly. Here? Yeah, yeah. The takeaway, um, I really think a lot of people saying like the importance of... Um, previous work and like having that available for someone to look at. It's the credibility, it's the trust um, being available. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. yeah. And, and people aren't just going to fork up um, the, the money in exchange for something that you're like, no, no, this is how mm. I work. As much as we do tend to teach that quite a lot mm. is um, to make sure that you're working uh, in a way that benefits you. You also need to think about from the client's perspective as well. What's going to help them to be comfortable with this transaction and make sure it is a win-win that's going to go forward. Yeah. Yep. And online reviews. I heard someone say mm. that um, making, uh, they the, would be feel happier paying up front if there were good online reviews. Yeah, which this is just is, a trust factor really, right. isn't it? Yeah, this yeah. is why... Um, the escrow system that yeah. um, that Upwork have mm. uh, is a great uh, platform. Same with Airbnb, that basically mm. works on an escrow, is that you make the payment, they hold the money in an escrow account, and then it gets released to the supplier once you've checked in or once you're happy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's a good, uh, yeah. good uh, system. Hey, a couple of things I want to clear up here. First of all, Graham Craig says, hi guys, hi. Graham, Jeffrey says, yen is Japanese. Um, RMB oh, too, might it? stand for recurring marketing budge. <laughs> No, no. Maybe that um, was supposed to be budget. Did you see Chris's? Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, singles holiday uh, is the Alibaba promotion. Mm. Now, the Chinese currency is yuan. The Chinese I hope currency I, I hope I'm pronouncing is that right. Ren renminbi. 
That's why RMB. Yeah, Ren, Ren Minbi, another, name, another name for the Chinese yen, yen, which yeah. is Y U E N, yeah. whereas the Japanese currency is Y E N. That is the mate. difference there. Um, Chris Hubank says, "Found on road, dead, Ford." Yeah, mm-hmm. that's what mm-hmm. that's what Ford stands for. Found on, Found road, on dead. road, dead. It's an acronym. We love a three-letter acronym here, um, especially when they contain four letters. And Roby Lawrence says, nice work, guys. Awesome segment and very interesting views from the public. There you Cheers, go. Cheers, Roby. Fantastic. Good, good. So we've got some other points we want to make here. And this is our golden nugget we'd love to share with you now. Time to dig into the gold nugget. As Troy goes, I have no idea what the gold <laughs> nugget Quick brief. The quick brief is, and you know all about this. Well, this is uh, what, based the, on, go on. Oh, well, I was just going to say, <laughs> the, gold, the gold nugget is... If you're asleep and your child starts <laughs> crying at 2.30 in the morning, mm-hmm. there is a chance that you don't have to get out of bed. Mm-hmm. Once a week for half an hour, I feel like I have a child. <laughs> <laughs> Today I, we're going to be talking listen, about... Don't talk about gin like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Just not, it's Max. That's just... <laughs> yeah. And his name <sighs> is Max. Um, so there was an epic blog post published. And there always is an epic blog post published every month. So on the WP Elevation. Was it really epic blog. or was it, it was epic? Oh, right, okay. It was absolutely epic. Right. Uh, and it's about achieving financial security. Is, oh, is, yeah. it a, is it a thing? Is it something that freelancers can hope to achieve? Uh, so one, one, a couple of takeaways from there. I highly recommend reading the article. You can check it out at wplinks.io slash financial dash security. Uh, I really love the intro here. Imagine a world where you had the security of knowing you were financially covered before you even started the work. What kind of work would you take on? What kind of clients would you take on? If it, if it wasn't a case of like, I have to do this to get the revenue, what mm. would that look like? Mm. I really think that's an interesting thought exercise there. So please let us know in the comments, how would that change the way you run your business and what projects you take on? Are there any clients you'd probably let go if you didn't have to have that money and you just worked on your passion projects? Yeah. Uh, there was a survey with uh, freelancers and a company called Endco. Have you heard of that one? Owned by Fiverr. That's right. Mm. Bought uh, about two years ago, I think. Uh, and only 23% uh, reported an improved financial stability since going out on their own venture, which is a bit of a sad really? state of affairs. Yeah, oh. which the reverse of that, obviously, is like 77 uh, report that they didn't have an improved financial the, standpoint. The, I, the financial security for me mm-hmm. is, uh, I have a lot of friends of mine who have jobs, and they say to me, oh, aren't you worried having your own business that you don't have the same security that you would have if you had a job? Mm. And I actually think it's the complete opposite. Mm. I think if you have a job, you're trusting that your employer is not going to screw up the business. Yeah, yeah. Whereas I would like to have my hands on the wheel of the bus that I'm driving. If I'm going to yep. be in a bus going up the side of a mountain, I want to be driving the thing. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, wow. Totally. Because I'm a control freak. Um, so financial security is, I mean, if you look, for, for me, financial security, and this is all part of our profit theme here for the month of November. That's right. Financial security is all about recurring revenue. If you've got enough recurring revenue in the business to pay the bills, mm. keep the cash flow coming in, pay the staff, keep the lights on, pay yourself a wage, then you can start to pick and choose the projects that you work on. Exactly. And my rule is, uh, I get this from my wife, fun, fun, number one. If it's not fun, it's not getting done. Mm, nice, nice. I like it. So uh, after working with thousands of freelancers here at WP Elevation, we really found that there's like three core projects within Binance that are super important to work on. And we call them projects because these are different things that you should be spending time on. One of them is having a profitable product. Would you care to explain? Yeah. So what, well, the difference the between, well, the difference between a, um, a product and a service is that a service is bespoke. It changes for every client. Mm-hmm. I, for me, client services kind of equal slavery. I mean that with all due respect, but you're basically just responding to client demands all the time. Whereas a product is predictable. The inclusions are in, the exclusions are out. You know how to sell it. Profit is baked into it. Mm-hmm. The client knows what they're getting. And most importantly, you can teach and delegate to team members how to deliver that product. Yeah, absolutely. And you can turn services into products. And we do have some previous episodes where we dive into that. So make sure you check out the Silence Golden Archives. Uh, also, uh, care contracts is another part of it. Mm-hmm. That's part number two. Mm-hmm. And these are our care plans that we f- refer to frequently. It is your recurring revenue. It is a good like baseline um, client base to ba- basically pay to be your client. Yeah. yeah. And so re- and not just maintenance because that's boring that's and that's right. not really going to be a thing. And nobody expect I mean nobody wants to pay for maintenance yeah, because exactly. they expect it, you know. Like yeah. even when you buy a new car these days there's like, you know, there's like 3 years of scheduled servicing built into the price of it. Yeah. Know? So 
Um, but care plans or care contracts or uh, some kind of recurring value that you add to the to the client's business, yep. taking care of their business and helping them achieve their goals is something that they will pay ongoing for. Yeah, I think recurring value is a good point there. It's not just like recurring revenue is what we want, obviously, but it's in exchange for the value that you give. So think about that. Um, also, digital dashboards is another part of financing. Yes. And that comes back to our webinar that we ran with Bianca Kennedy from Know The Score Finance, uh, which was an awesome webinar um, last week. Uh, you can check that out. I'm sure it's going to be published pretty soon. And we talked about knowing your numbers and having the digital dashboard so you've got the visibility into what is going on in your business so you can make better financial decisions. And one of our favorite tools for that uh, is Clipfolio to get started building digital dashboards. And in fact, we are building digital dashboards for our Mavericks Club members mm. right now to basically put their own business in front of them for radical transparency and accountability and go, well, this is what you said you wanted to achieve and here's the dashboard to tell you whether or not you are on track. So Clipfolio is the tool that we are using for that. Yeah, exactly. So the gold nugget this week is when it comes to finance, uh, building your profitable product, or your predictable product, sorry, uh, having your care contracts in place and having your digital dashboards mm. together. So working on the one that you are most at risk of falling behind with. There you go. <sighs> Future is so bright, I've got to wear shades, my friend. Yeah. <laughs> What's that from? It's a song oh. from the 80s. Oh. It's an Australian song. Mm, 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 Can't remember mm. who sang it. Someone will tell us. Yeah. Let us know who sung that song. Uh, cool. Of course, there are, to there are tools that we use to help with our financial oh, security. I? And this week we have... Get ready for Tool of the Week. That didn't work as an intro to that, but that's fine. This week we have zero as a Tool of the Week. Oh. Like financial software is oh, not zero. Oh, zero minx, not zero. I thought you we said have we have zero nothing. tools. We've got nothing this week. Yeah, zero not tools. the most exciting of things to you know zero, talk about. Yeah. It's accounting. You have to pay attention to it. But you'd be surprised at how many business owners don't actually know how to read a profit and loss statement. 100%. Yeah, yeah, you need to. Like, you, you have to. It's the language of your business, loss. basically. Yeah, yeah. You need to understand how it works. Yeah. Uh, profit and loss, balance sheet, and that other one. Christopher Stratman, Timbuk Three, <laughs> Timbuk Three were the, name, the, of the name of the band that sang "My Future So Bright." I've got to wear shades. There you go. Yes, I'm looking at you, Christopher Stratman. You know. <laughs> he does Little. too. He knows exactly what I'm talking about. Cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> Um, Karen Leslie says, love zero. It makes reconciliation and reporting so much quicker. That's yeah. right. So it's got invoicing. You can put your bills in there, put your clients in there. It does automatic uh, follow-ups for the invoices as well, which is great. And uh, you can accept payments online. So if you're not using online accounting software, definitely sign up for something like Xero. Uh, it's awesome. And make sure you are checking in regularly with a financial professional and uh, knowing where your numbers are. Sweet. There you go. Pretty good for time, I reckon. Unreal. Should wrap it up. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, got some uh, stuff to do after this. <laughs> I told you Christopher Stratman knew what I was talking about. Um, ah. We, I do have to bounce out of here because yeah, I am about to host, I'm about to record an episode of the WP Elevation podcast. Hang around here on the WP Elevation Facebook page if you're watching this because coming up very shortly in about 12 minutes, I will be recording an episode of the WP Elevation podcast and my guest this week, uh, on this particular episode, I just want to make sure I pronounce his name correctly, is Joe Casabona, who of course is a WordPress uh, personality and uh, WordPress um, developer and coach and, awesome. and trainer and educator. And he's coming up, an online course creator, he's coming up on the podcast. That'll be happening at 11 a.m. Sydney time, which is in about 12, 11 and a half minutes from now. Right here? Right here in the studio, that's right. Slightly awesome. different angle, but we'll be here, yeah. How good is that you can set up from this to the next thing? It's very oh, cool indeed, my friend. Well done. Um, there's lots coming up here over the next few weeks. The wall over there is coming down very shortly. Sorry about that. The wall over <laughs> there is coming down very shortly, and we're going to take over the next room there and double the size of the video studio to produce more high-quality content. I have a vision. Simon, mm -hmm. I was awake at th three o'clock and four o'clock and five o'clock this morning, not being able to sleep, but my brain was going ping, 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 ping. And that wasn't because of the Sudafed I had yesterday. <laughs> it was just because I was flooded with ideas and um, what, I, I, I crystallized the vision that I have for this company. Nice. And uh, you'll have Oscar to, to thank for that, you'll really? You'll have to wait. I'm gonna share it with you at some point in the future. No, no, the vision really is to turn this facility into a television station. Mm a radio station, and a online news publication. Awesome. So uh, the long-term vision here is to be running 24-hour programming on a TV station. Uh -huh. Not live, of course, some of it will be pre-recorded. 
because it's a bit hard for us to be doing it 24 hours a day. Um, radio content, mm -hmm. 24 hours a day, playing your favourite tunes that you can work to, and then also having like an episode of a podcast come in and, you know. Subliminal and, yeah, tracks. Yeah, that's like, right. Subliminal yeah. sales messages that's to get right. you to buy more plugins. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, um, and, a new, and an online uh, news portal where we deliver what's happening in the world of creative digital freelancing nice. uh, and articles and blog posts and opinion pieces. So that is the long-term vision for this uh, company. And so, in a, so the reason I'm saying that is because it's fabulous to now be able to go from a live stream like this and within a very short space of time turn it around into a podcast mm. studio. I like how you're making that time window smaller mm. and smaller as well. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And let's try and see if I can get maxed out a 30 second uh, turnaround. Yeah. So stay here on the Facebook page. In about 10 minutes, we've got a live podcast with Joe Casabona. Uh, um, other than that, please like us on Facebook. Share this with your friends because it really does help us get the message out to a wider audience. And feel free to subscribe to us on YouTube. Uh, WPElevation.com slash YouTube is where you can go for that. And for the podcast, it's WPElevation.com slash iTunes where you can subscribe to the podcast. Leave us a rating and a review. It does help us come up in the search results. And tell us who you would like to see on the show or the podcast coming up in the future. Mm -hmm. Is that it? We're mm, done? Absolutely. Awesome. Very good. Well, look forward to seeing you again next week. Hopefully, I'll be a little more slept. Oh, and also, at 6.30 tonight, Sydney time, which is 8.30 in the morning Central European time. I don't know what time it is for the Americans, but I'm sure you can figure it out. I will be live in the Elementor Community Facebook group. Awesome. Um, doing a live Q&A with Ben Pines about building your WordPress business. Uh, so join the Elementor Community Facebook group right now and uh, RSVP to that event. It's going to be a lot of fun. Cool, great. Got a big day today. Like an Ask Me Anything. Like an Ask Me Anything. Yeah, yeah cool, exactly. nice one. Looking forward to that. Very All right, exciting. look forward to speaking with you again soon. Until then, my name is Troy Dean. I'm Simon Kelly. Remember, knowledge is power. And silence is golden.